Today is, like I said, October 20th. We are looking at section 3-3. Graphing systems of linear inequalities. We've already touched on how to graph a linear inequality with either broken lines or solid lines based on if there's an equal sign present and then shading that occurs because we're speaking of the line as being a boundary to something, to a specific region. And we're identifying the region by shading. Got a clean sheet of paper and take notes. All right, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting two or more of these linear inequalities on the same graph and we're looking for where the sections of shading overlap each other. Okay, so before we get into it, I want to show you something real quick. Has anybody ever worked with Venn diagramming? Yes? Yes, it's the use of circles and you talk about the different categories. Right. Okay, so what I'm just, just as a little visual of what we're trying to look for is we have several conditions that are being met, and we're trying to see where all of those conditions are being satisfied at the same time. Okay? Let's say we were talking about students on this campus that take part in extracurricular activities. We have some students who are in athletics. We have some students, okay, who are in Rangers. What's another thing? Drama. Drama? Okay. All right. Now, in this region here, this includes students who are athletes and in Rangers at the same time. Can you think, is anybody in here an athlete and in Rangers? Okay. Let's we'll say Patrick Long Close. All right. This section here includes students who are in athletics and drama, but not in Rangers. Is anyone in here in athletics and drama, but not Rangers? No? Okay, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just say this person, okay? This section here is someone who would be in drama and Rangers, but not athletics. All right? And in the center is someone who is an athlete, who is in drama, who is in Rangers. All three. Okay? So, what we're looking for in the graphs that we're going to be doing today is where everything is overlapping and all of these groups are taking place at the same time. Okay? Now, we're going to have lines where we may have had shading done above one line, and then we'll have another line where we shaded below the line. Those two lines crisscross each other to form four new sections. There's a V at the top, a V at the bottom, a V on the left, and a V on the right. But only one of those sections is colored in with blue and red at the same time. Okay? So the actual graph that we're looking for is just that section right there. Because that's where both conditions were being met at the same time. Now I have the benefit of easily erasing the stuff that I don't want to show up. It's not as easy for you on your paper. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you before we even start dealing with lines. I started with this line, and I said we shaded above it, right? Well, instead of actually shading, what we're going to do is draw little arrows to show ourselves where we want to shade. 
Okay, we're not going to shade yet. And then when we draw our next line, we do the same thing. And we draw arrows showing where we want the shading to occur. And then we identify which regions have the arrows pointing in together. Where are the arrows pointing together? In the right, over here. Over here is where your arrows are pointing together. So this is where your shading would take place. And that's what your graph would look like. So all the you shading the place that Exactly. The place where they're both happening at the same time. And just right. And you can just leave the arrows. Okay? So the and then now you don't have a big mess on your paper, you don't have all kinds of erasing to do. Alright? Okay. Now let's actually do some lines. All right, tonight for homework, you're doing 13 through 25, the odds on page 126. So if you turn to page 126, we're going to work through some evens. Remember, we are having a test Thursday on Chapter 3. All right, number 12 says x is greater than or equal to 2. And then the second line is y is greater than 3. Now the first thing I need to identify is the fact that one of these lines is solid and one of them is going to be broken. Which one will be solid, the blue or the red? Blue. The blue will be solid because it has equal to... The red will be broken because it is not equal to, okay? All right, what kind of line is x equals 2? Solid line. I heard solid, I heard... Horizontal. Nope. Horizontal. Vertical. Vertical. X equals 2 is a vertical line because x is always 2 no matter what y is. If y is 1, x is 2. If y is 22, x is still 2. No matter what y is, x is 2, and we already said it's a solid line. And now we need to shade in certain a certain region, either one side or the other. Now, normally we've been saying up or down, but with a vertical line, you don't have up and down. You have left and right. So, Lex, guess which way we're going to go? Greater than. To the right, there you go, way to take his cues. Took him a few times when he got there. To the right, okay, greater than, remember this is x-axis, this is like your number line. Your numbers get bigger as you move to the right. All right, so, but we don't want to shade yet because we have another line that we have to take into consideration. Y equals 3 is a horizontal line. Going through positive 3 on the y-axis, and we said it's broken. And I'm not drawing my lines very well, but there you go. And where does the shading occur for this one? Up, oh, above it. It says greater than, so we would shade above. All right, can you see the four regions that have been created by the two intersecting lines? Which one has the arrows pointing together, Dwight? the top right section. So this is where your shading would occur. And that's what your graph should look like. Okay? It's really not that difficult. We're just taking what we learned last week and we're doing two of them at the same time. We're looking for where they're both being satisfied at the same time. Okay. That was number 12. Let's look at number 14. The first line is y is less than 2 minus x. Is my slope 2? No, those, le those things are in the wrong order, right? So if I just flip them around, very good. Negative x plus 2.